In this video, we're gonna show you how you can keep your family and your pipes warm in the event of a winter power outage. It is astonishing how many people do not have a backup solution in the event of a winter power outage. In fact, recent studies showed that 85 to 94% of US citizens do not have any means of getting emergency power in the event of a winter power outage. So in this video, we're gonna show you a simple, very cheap trick to get power to your gas furnace in the event of a power outage. The two items we're gonna be using today is this 14 gauge nine foot pigtail, as well as this outlet. Both of these items are less than $20, so you don't have to break the bank to get power to your gas furnace. So with that, let's jump right into it. Today's video is brought to you by Alpine Home Air, America's number one choice for quality, affordable DIY HVAC equipment. All right, so when you go to your gas furnace, whether it's in the attic, the basement, wherever it's located, you will likely find a simple switch like this. Now this is designed so that people, uh, HVAC technicians can work on this unit and in an emergency they can turn it off. That's the sole purpose of this. But you cannot get power to this because there's no way to do it. It's just a switch. You can't plug anything in. And that's where installing an outlet like this one comes in handy. So we're basically gonna replace this switch with an outlet and then we're gonna wire a pigtail to the gas furnace. So this will effectively be acting just like this fridge right here. We simply are plugging it into an outlet that we're installing here with permanent power. And then when the power goes out, we'll simply unplug it from the outlet and then we can plug it into a generator. Now we'll explain this in more detail, but for starters, we're going to turn the power off to the furnace. So we'll head over to our breaker panel and find the breaker for this furnace. All right, so we're here at our breaker panel. So we're just gonna search here for the furnace. So number 19, the top one, that's going to be for our furnace. So we'll simply pop that breaker off and then we'll go over to our furnace and verify that we don't have power. Now, if you don't know which breaker is for your gas furnace, if it wasn't labeled correctly, I wanna show you how critical this tool can be. I use this all the time. This one you can find on Amazon for super cheap. So I'll make sure and leave a link in the video description or if you'd like to check it out on TV, I'll put it up here in the left corner. So this is a non-contact voltage tester. So if there was any voltage here, we would be able to test more so once we take this cover off. But first of all, we just wanna verify that this does work and then we'll confirm that we don't have any power here. Okay, so this is another active outlet in my garage. As you can see, this product works. It's alerting us, letting us know that there is AC voltage. And now up close and personal, we can verify that there is no power. So we see there's no beeping, no red flashing. That means that there is no power here. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove our outlet. Now this is what you'll see when you remove the outlet on your gas furnace. So we have our neutral, that's wire nutted here. We have our ground, that's wire nutted here. This could be screwed into the case there. And then we have two blacks. So this black is coming from the grid, from this Romex or this uh, MC cable here, going to one side of the outlet, and this is the wire that goes into the furnace. So let's go ahead and remove all of this, and we'll make sure it's crystal clear how to wire this. So, Okay, so for clarity, we're gonna just remove the cover and expose the wires on the backside on this Blue Ridge furnace. We have a little junction box here on the inside of our furnace. So let's go ahead and remove this screw and slide our cover off here. Now, as you can see, the only wires going in here are white, black, and green. So we're just gonna pull these through for clarity's sake. Now your furnace might be different. Maybe some of these wires are going in here and the wire nuts could be inside here. But in my particular application, the wire nuts were on this box. So if we look back over here, now all we have is our wires that come from the grid. We have white, black, and green. So this is the power that we're gonna power our outlet with. And as you can tell, it's totally isolated from these wires over here that goes to our furnace. Now for clarity's sake, I just wanna answer a couple of questions that I got asked so many times when I discussed this same topic previously. And number one was, will this pigtail ever be live? And the answer is no. The other question was, will this ever send power back or backfeed the grid, potentially harming a lineman? Also, the answer is no. As we showed here, these are totally isolated. And so when we put this pigtail on, 
It's like a fridge or a toaster oven or a microwave or a TV. It simply plugs into the outlet and then when you need emergency power, you unplug it from that power source and you plug it into another power source such as a generator or a power station or whatever you're getting power from, the inverter on your truck. All of these things will power this as it's only a 15 amp circuit requiring a 14 gauge pigtail. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is install our outlet. Since all we have here at our junction box is a ground, our hot, and our neutral. And you can do this with a traditional outlet like this one, nothing fancy here. You have these stab connections on the back or you could wrap it around like what we did on the previous one there on that light switch. Or what you can do is use one of these Lever Edge by Leviton. These are about seven bucks on Amazon. I'll make sure and leave them linked again in the video description, as well as right here if you're watching on TV. And the beauty of this is that this is basically like a Wago lever nut. Now, if you've never seen one of these, this is basically like a wire nut, but so much better. So you simply slide this open, slide your wire in, this will lock in more sturdy than a wire nut. You can even put electrical tape around it to make sure that it stays secure. And I love the Wagos. I even noticed that Home Depot is starting to sell these in store, which is really cool. But this is basically a Wago that's included on this outlet. So we're simply gonna slide our wire in, lock it in, and it is that easy. You don't have to wrap it around, worry about it ever coming undone or getting hot. So we're gonna show you exactly how easy this is to install. So first of all, let's do our ground here. So we're gonna cut this, cut the insulation off just like that. And something that a lot of people don't know these outlets have is right here. This is actually the strip gauge, as you can see. And that tells you how far you need to strip that wire. So you bump it up right here to the edge. You can mark it or just kind of hold it with your finger there. And then we're gonna use our 14 gauge spot right here, slide it off. And that is the proper distance for that wire. So now all we're gonna do is pull this lever nut back. We're gonna slide it in, noticing that it goes right up to where we cut it because we used that tool and we snap it in, give it a good tug. It is not budging whatsoever. And of course we don't have a bunch of wire here exposed and that's the whole idea of this outlet. The other cool part about this outlet is it's easily identified. So our black or our hot will go to this side and our neutrals will go to this side, which are color coded. And that's a really cool feature of this outlet. Okay, so same thing here. We're gonna just cut our white. We'll use this thing to gauge how much to cut here. Slip it in and that is it. I absolutely love these outlets. Now, as you can see, even if your wire is not perfectly straight, this will still slide in and lock in with no problem. And this just makes installing, whether you're installing an outlet or putting an outlet on your furnace, whatever the case on the wall, that makes this job so much easier. Now I wanna show you another trick here. So we noticed that this bolt or screw is way too long. It's gonna hit our MC cable here. So we're gonna go ahead and unthread this holding the little plastic backing piece. And we're gonna show you how easy these screws are to cut. A lot of people don't realize that pretty much any wire stripper is going to have a built-in tool for this. So these things right here are made for cutting these screws. So we're gonna simply thread this into the correct one, whichever one allows us to start threading that screw in. And then we're just gonna thread it to the correct length here and it's going to cut that right in the middle here. So we wanna make this pretty short. I think right here would be good. So all we do is squeeze this with both hands and watch what happens. This cuts that off. When we unthread this with a screw gun, it's going to clean up the threads and this screw is now ready to go. So we'll simply put our little backing piece back on and there we go, easy as that to trim a screw. So let's go ahead and get it started with our right one here. Easy as that folks. The other beautiful part about this outlet is there's nothing exposed on the sides of this. 
Whereas if you were installing a traditional outlet like this one, and maybe you didn't fasten this one all the way in, you have the potential for a wire or anything really to get in between the metal case and this and cause a spark or even a fire. So a lot of times if I'm installing one of these, I will wrap this with electrical tape just to make sure that nothing potentially hits this. But this Leviton um, lever outlet basically removes that hazard altogether. All right, so this section is totally complete. We can pop a cover on here and we are good to go. Next, let's move on to our pigtail. So once again, this is a 14 gauge pigtail. It is rated for 15 amps which is what your traditional gas furnace is rated for. So make sure you don't get a 16 gauge or anything higher than that. Now this piece right here is not 100% critical, but if you want this to be safe from vibrating against the case of your cabinet, you definitely wanna make sure and use this. Something else you could use is something like this. This is just a rubber uh, grommet that keeps, you just don't want this wire rubbing against the metal is all. And what this does is it'll fasten with this nut, this will sandwich right here, and then we can clamp down on our pigtail and keep it nice and secure from moving. So we'll simply fasten this nut on the other side, and we're gonna rotate it to where we can access these screws and tighten them easily. Next, we're just gonna slip our pigtail through here. So we're just gonna start feeding this in, and we just wanna give ourselves enough distance to where we can go through either the existing hole there or this new one here. Again, making sure that we're not hitting any raw edges. These right here are specifically designed, you can see they're curved so that nothing will rub against these wires. This is a factory edge here, so it's obviously up to code as they wouldn't be able to manufacture these like that otherwise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it enough length to go in through this top hole and then we'll make our connections right here. Okay, so we have our six wires here. These are the ones that go to our pigtail and these are the ones that go to our furnace. So we're just gonna do our grounds first here and we're gonna be using these same Wago lever nuts. They make this process so easy and they're much more compact and you don't have to give yourself carpal tunnel twisting those wire nuts. So you're just gonna slip it in until you see it touch the edge, you know it's fully seated. And you can also see that there's nothing exposed here. So nothing has the potential to um, arc or touch something it's not supposed to touch. Same with this one here from our furnace. And you can see they're both touching the edge right there. Next, we'll move on to our hot leg. And lastly, our neutral. I love that with these, you don't have to be concerned that these are making a good connection. Uh, whereas with a wire nut, sometimes if you're using a solid core to a stranded core, it can be really difficult to get it to grab. And you're always wondering if it has a good connection. This doesn't matter. If you're going from solid to stranded or stranded to stranded, it will always make a good connection. Now, something else you can do here as a fail safe is you can just take some electrical tape and just tape these together. And what that's gonna do is ensure that no matter if this is vibrating or what have you, it's not ever going to pull those lever nut, uh, those levers undone. And just like that, we can simply fold this over and put our cover back on. There we go. So our cover is on, our outlet is done. And lastly, we're just going to secure this and this job is pretty much done. Let's give that a couple tugs. As long as it's secure, this is good to go. Now, another thing that you can get on Amazon is these little Velcro straps. So you don't wanna to have too much cable here, but I really don't think it matters all that much. Um, this is a nine foot cable. So if you don't wanna to have to run an extension cord, if you can run your power station right here locally, um, then this little Velcro, Velcro strip makes it a lot easier than having to run an extension cord, which is even worse than just having a long pigtail. So you can kind of just leave this spooled up like this, plug it in, and now this becomes our disconnect. 
so that in the event that there is a power outage or if we wanna service our gas furnace, instead of flipping a switch, we'll simply unplug this and now it is completely dead. Okay, so now that we have everything buttoned up and plugged in, we're going to restore power to our gas furnace with our breaker. So we have that turned back on and we're going to power this in AC or grid power mode. And then we're gonna show you real time as if a power outage happened. But for starters, we're gonna put this in heating mode and see the furnace kick on. Again, this is a demo furnace. So you'll notice we have a quick connect gas fitting. This is just for demonstration purposes. So don't be alarmed by that. And of course this isn't vented, which is extremely dangerous. So if you're powering your gas furnace at home, obviously make sure it's vented, your gas is gonna look different. Everything here is gonna look different, but the same concept will apply. Okay, so we're gonna bump this into heating mode. So we'll bump it up a couple degrees here and bam. Our inducer motor has come on. The next thing we'll notice is our hot surface igniter will glow red in here. And there we go. And next we will have ignition. All right, we got some nice blue flames there. Before this runs for too long, I'm just gonna go ahead and bump it off here at the thermostat. And what that's gonna do is turn off the inducer and it's going to run the fan until this heat exchanger cools off. Okay, so now we're gonna act as if there is a power outage right now. So there is no power to this outlet. We'll simply unplug this. Again, this will never ever be live at any point. Um, this is just like a pigtail going to a TV or a refrigerator. So we'll simply take this Velcro off, which will give us as much length as we need. And we're going to be using this EcoFlow River 2 to power our gas furnace. So we'll simply plug that guy in. We've got plenty of juice there. Turn our AC power on, and then we'll signal at our thermostat for heating. Now something I want to mention here is this bonding plug right here. So this is critical if you have this situation where your generator or your power station does not want to power your gas furnace. So check this out. We're at our thermostat. We bump this up to 73 and we notice that nothing is going on. It says this will heat up to 73 in 30 minutes. So it's calling for heating, but again, nothing is coming on. Now watch what happens as soon as I put this bonding plug in one of these outlets. And before I do, I just wanna show you what this is. All it does is it connects the neutral to the ground and basically bonds the two together. That's all this is doing and watch what happens. As Soon as I plug this in, our furnace comes on. So we're gonna see how many watts this pulls. Right now we're pulling 89 watts with the inducer. The hot surface igniter is about to come on in just a second. 250 watts. It kind of peaked and then went down. The uh, burner assembly will light, which doesn't cause any additional uh, amps to be drawn. But the final test will be the blower fan that comes on. All right, there we have ignition. So after about 30 seconds, our fan will come on. And right now we're still at about 95 watts. So we'll come back as soon as our fan kicks on. All right, our fan just came on, 250 watts. And that is as much as this furnace is ever going to pull, is 250 watts. So it says that this tiny little River Pro 2 will run this for about two hours. It just said three a second ago um, consistently. Of course, when you run your gas furnace, you're gonna be cycling on and off as you heat up the space and then the temperature falls a little bit. So this could be more like four hours for this tiny little generator or power station, which is pretty epic. All right, so let's hop back over to our thermostat, bump this back off. And it is as easy as that, guys, to power your gas furnace with a small generator or any generator for this matter, but in this instance, a small EcoFlow 2. So we saw our inducer motor turned off and our blower motor will stay on for about 30 more seconds. 
Now, if you wanna see what the most common reason why your gas furnace is not turning on, you can find that video right there and it'll help you get your gas furnace back up and running completely free of charge. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.